Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. I am Heidi and today I am delivering it. That's right. You've asked and I am delivering. What am I talking about? I'm talking about my whimsy girls. The uh, video that I did of called Scrap Scrap Scraps. Um, so many of you asked how I make the girls that are on those quilts. Well today I am here to show you how I do that. So I'm excited to share that with you. Really quick, I'm going to put a PDF down below in the description of this video. That PDF is going to give you a pattern to start with. You know, if you're an artist, you can draw, do your own pattern, whatever you want to do. But I don't want it to make this easy for you. For those of you who, who don't draw, who've never drawn, I'm giving you a pattern so that you have something to start with. I wanted to be sure to encourage you to um, subscribe, hit the bell right next to the subscribe button because that's going to tell you when I have a new video put out. And yeah, if you give me a thumbs up too, that would be awesome. And if you have any questions, please be sure to ask below just in case I didn't cover everything in the video. Um, throughout this whole project, I'm using a 9014 sewing needle. I'm using an all-purpose thread in my bobbin. Otherwise, I'm using quilting and embroidery threads, but there's really no exact science to this. That's just what I happen to use. Don't be restricted to that. You use what you want to use. And without further ado, let's get started on this project. If you saw the um, Scrap Scrap Scraps video where I showed you how to make a piece of fabric using up all your scraps and how to use that fabric, this is the piece that I um, did for that. And so many of you have asked um, how I make the girls on these quilts. And here is another one that I did over here. And so I am answering that question by doing a video today. If you want to see how I did the background piece, I will put a link up above. So this is only for how to make the girls. And I will give you a link for a PDF that you can use for making a girl. It will be closer to this style over here. This is the background um, that I'm going to use for the next girl that I make. And this one, it was just a bunch of scraps left over from... Um, a jelly roll. Just because this had lots of blues and some purples and a lot of sparkle to it, I decided when I quilted it to do some snowflakes designs. In between those, it's just like swirl, like the swirls of snow. So it's kind of, kind of supposed to mimic snowflakes falling and swirling in the sky. I have a drawing here of um, the girls that I use on my quilts and I did make a PDF that's very similar to this that I will have available on my website and you can access that by going down into the description of this video and there will be a link there for you. I use my light pad and you've seen me use that in the past. Um, I can put a link for that to show you what I use but I use my light pad to trace that image just the part that will show um, outside of the dress basically her upper torso and I, I extend the arms down further than the dress because I want to make sure that the arms are completely tucked behind the dress. So what I'm going to do now with this fabric and this is just a cotton quilting fabric and I'm going to be using my ink tense blocks and again it's not something I'm going to be teaching how I do that I'm just going to let the video run and you can watch me as I paint but I do have other videos that explain the ink tents and give more instruction about that but I'm going to go ahead and paint my image now
I have her painted and the next step for me will be I use a permanent marker with a very fine tip and I do a little detailing as far as her eyelashes and the pupil of her eye. It's pretty much how I um, get the color on her as far as her face, skin, and hair. This is a product that's called Fuse and Stick, um, something I bought quite a long time ago, but it does have two sticky sides to it. So I'm going to cut a piece to fit on this girl, and then I'll fuse it to the back side before I cut her out. So I have the Fuse and Stick on the back side of the girl that I painted, and some parchment paper here to press this on. And let that cool before I take it off. But I'm going to go ahead and cut her out, following her outside lines, and I will be cutting out in between the arms as well. And actually, I will, um, I don't really have to cut a hole inside, I'll just cut along here and then cut that out. I have her cut out, and now it's pretty much playing paper dolls here. We're going to have to decide what we want to do as far as. Um, clothes, um, what kind of dress we're going to put on her. I am going to pretty much follow this top that I have drawn out. Her dress is going to be all in white. I'm going to be doing her dress all in white and I have um, this linen handkerchief that I'm actually going to use for her skirt and I will also use part of it for her top as well but it has a nice finished edge down here and I'm actually going to even do a little bit of um, embroidery down here. Um, just to put a little more detail with some color, probably with some blue, just to kind of go with the background of the, the quilt piece. But because this is very see-through, I'm also going to use this heavier linen that I have as an underskirt or a petticoat. And I will um, also sew a piece of lace um, along the bottom edge of this um, petticoat. I'm going to be cutting a rectangular piece out for the skirt and I measured across the bottom of the skirt and it's five and a half inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it out one and a half times that so about seven and a half, seven and three quarters inches. I'm going to cut it that long and then the height that I want the skirt to be. And I think I decided that yeah I'm going to cut it seven inches. So I'm, it's almost going to be a square. Seven inch by um, seven and three quarters inches. Right, this um, square is for the petticoat and I have a piece of lace here that I cut to the width or the length of it. I have the lace with the top edge along the bottom and I'm, I'm going to sew across that. I'm going to go ahead and do a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to go ahead and press this and turn this like this and then top stitch over that and that will give a nice lace edge. I've pressed it and I'm going to go ahead and do the top stitching about an eighth of an inch away from the actual original seam. Okay, I have my regular presser foot on now and on all the raw edges of the skirt panels I am going to do a zigzag just to keep the frayed edges under control. So I'm using a zigzag stitch width of 3.0 and the stitch length at 2.6. Excuse me, I sewed three sides together. I did not sew the um, bottom edges together. I like to keep those free, but I do have the three other edges um, sewn together. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a straight stitch and I'm going to lengthen my stitch to a 4.0, maybe even, let's do a 4.5, and I'm going to um, do two rows close together of straight stitches across the top of the squares, square panels, to gather the, the skirt at the waist. And you do want to leave long tails so that if you've never done this before you want to leave long tails to um, pull up the gathers. And I usually grab the tails from the underside 
and it doesn't really matter they both will work but that's just what I normally do here is the skirt gathered up well I like the fit um, of the skirt so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change my straight stitch back into length about a 2.5 and I'm going to go ahead and stitch between the two places that I did the gathering stitches and that's going to lock those gathers in on each end I do like to curl that end under because we don't want any you want it to look like the dress goes around her body now that I have that stitch to hold it in place I'm going to go ahead and pull out my gathering threads and it's time to make the bodice part of the dress and so I'm going to take the linen that goes on that's the skirt part same linen and I'm going to go put it in my light box and I'm going to trace out just the bodice and I'm going to bring it down past the arms just a little bit that way I can um, move the skirt around I'm, I'm going to fuse this then onto the petticoat linen won't be so see-through I've ironed the fuse and stick onto the back of this bodice piece and it's cooled off now so I can actually peel it off the back I'm going to fuse this now onto the petticoat linen. And what's nice about this is that you can press it on there and then before you iron it, you can actually peel it and reposition it if you need to. But I'll go ahead and iron that on there now. Okay, the two pieces of linen are fused together and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this shape out. And I'm gonna cut just right, barely inside the line so that you don't see the pencil line. I'm gonna cut the pencil line away. I did draw it outside the line so I could do that. So I've played around a little bit with the positioning of her on the quilt and I think that's about where I want her. So now it's just about getting the pieces put on. Here's the bodice and that will go on over the top of that once I get her down. But um, I'm just going to, I'm going to mark with a pin where I want the top of her head to be because I need to move her in order to peel the backing off and then I'm going to go ahead and fuse her onto the quilt and I know there's a little trick you can do by using pin and scratching the backing of the stuff but I don't usually have too much of a problem peeling it off so remember if you've never used this kind of stuff before she's sticky right now but she's repositionable I can reposition her anywhere I need to if I'm not liking how I it went down the first time but it's looking good. The bodice to her dress will, is what will be going on next. And this is a little bit more finicky because I want to make sure I'm covering up all the pieces from underneath. So and that looks pretty good. So I've got her bodice on. So now it's just... Um, ironing this down, make sure she's good and attached to the quilt. All right, she should be attached very well. Let that cool off. But before I attach the skirt, what I like to do then is I'm going to be doing some um, free motion quilting on her. I'm going to be doing detailing with the hair and around the face and arms and put my darning foot back on or free motion foot. Uh, have the feed dogs down dropped and I've chosen these two colors here. Um, these threads are actually um, by Superior Threads and it's a quilting embroidery thread but these are the living colors and they have really just really nice sheen to them. And instead of doing black like a lot of times that I do, I just decided um, these two colors really just um, complement, I think, her skin and everything really well. But I'm going to start out with the lighter of the two colors. done all the stitching on her uh, body and hair that I'm going to do and now I have a silky thread 
that I'm going to use just to go over the bodice of her dress. Just in case I haven't mentioned it, these are all 40 weight threads. I finished stitching around her bodice. I gave kind of, I did some loops um, going around the neckline and on the arms just to kind of make it look a little bit lacy. I have my sheen um, uh, set up back to regular sewing and I have it at a zigzag stitch now and the width is at four, length is at three. And I am going to tack the skirt on just but leaving about a half an inch on each side of it untacked because I'm going to be using this lace that I used in the petticoat to cover this um, waist and make a waistline and I want to be able to tuck it under to make it look like it goes to the back. So like I said, I'm going to be using this lace to cover um, the waistline. And for obvious reasons, you know, it's just something that you need to do to do that transition from being applique down to being more three-dimensional. And I will switch this back to a straight stitch. Okay, that was kind of um, probably about a third of the way down the lace, and that just covered that um, that skirt a little bit more, anchored that down a little bit more. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up the side of the skirt of the lace, and now I'm going to turn it and follow the top edge. It's going to be a little tricky because my foot's going to be uneven here. Um, I have this little tool here that helps even out the foot. And I'm going to go ahead and use that just so that I don't have any issues with the thread or anything breaking. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing, just come down. have the <clears throat> lace on the skirt is on so now it's all about I got to get these sides down and basically that's going to take hand stitching because I don't want any of those stitches to show I am um, pinned the bottom edge of the skirt on both sides and it's important to do that just because you know where you're heading to and you're not going to pulling it too hard in one direction and not be able to get the sides tucked under the way that they need to be and if you've done any applique of any kind, you know, that's basically all you do is just a little hip blind stitch. But um, I want this to have that curl under, so I don't want to tack that down so it lays flat like that. I want to keep that three dimension, but I do to bury um, the knot in my thread. I don't want that showing up. I'm going down into the quilt, just travel in down a little bit and then pop out from the skirt. It's tough to show, but I pop up so that I'm coming un from under the skirt a little bit. I'm not coming at that edge because again, I don't want the side of the skirt to lay flat. So it's really, you don't want to pull your stitches too terribly tight. So I'm just going down where my thread comes out of the skirt. I go down into the quilt right there, travel down just a little bit and then pop up through the skirt down just a little ways from underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and tack that down both sides and I'll come back when that's done. Um, the skirt is completely sewn on. Um, I think it came out pretty well as far as looking um, three-dimensional. One thing that I want to point out that if it's easier for you, you may want to trim your quilt and 
bind it before you put any of the three-dimensional um, aspects to the quilt on it. Just It might be easier for you. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and trim it and uh, and do the binding and, and the sleeve for hanging it. If you're not sure how to do that, I'll put a link to how you do that. I have a quilt, another video that shows how to do that. And then see about any other little embellishments that I want to put on the quilt. I got the binding all on. And one of the things that I did in keeping with the um, vintage linens is I actually cut a piece about two inches wide. And when I put the binding on, I incorporated this along this border edge right here. And um, I also embroidered the words, let it go. And I thought the dorset button up there was a great addition to this as well, kind of reminiscent of snowflakes. There's so much more that you can do. You can get a lot of embroidery that you can do. I did a couple little uh, French knots right there, added a button. And um, I'll probably do a little bit more as far as um, some embroidery just because I do have a little bit of wear spots in the linen that I like to cover those up with some flowers. And um, yeah, so this is it. And that's how you do um, these little whimsy dolls on the quilts and you can just get as creative as you want um have fun with it and i hope that you come on over to my facebook page heidi creates 1965 and share what you have made following this tutorial thanks for watching stay well stay happy and until next time have a great one bye for now